<laughs> Listen up, son. America wants you. You died in the service of our country, so we thank you. America! Hello guys, and welcome to the Jocko Productions 4th of July holiday special. Well, it's really just another GES or Generic Essay Series episode. But let's just get to it. Today, I'll be talking about what I think to be the best war films that I've seen. And it just happened to round out to about 20 films. So it's basically the top 20. But first, let me get these films out of the way that I did not put on the list because I have not seen them, but I think that they would be great. Or because I don't think they fit with the list as well, even though I have seen them. Without further ado, let's get into the video. But first, hi, my name is Tyler and I love film. And today I'll be talking about my top war films. If you've watched past videos, it comes at no surprise that I'm starting off this list with my number one pick, which is Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now is a great film and one of my favorites of all times. It has everything you could ever want from a war film. It's surreal, disturbing, and deep, and tells a great story with its themes perfectly placed in, with direction that perfectly serves everything happening within the film, and pretty much everything about it being perfect while also having mainstream appeal. I pretty much said everything that I wanted to say about this film in a past video essay and talked about my interpretation of the themes of the film. But I find that the film resonates very deeply, especially with someone who knows a lot about the Vietnam War and is very interested in that. But for anybody who has relatives who served in the Vietnam War, this film will definitely hit home. It's exploration of the human mind under the circumstances of war and how men react to war and war creates monsters just is executed so perfectly that there's no way that this could not be the best war film, especially since it resonates with me deeper than the rest of these and disturbs me on a level only rivaled by one film, which we will get to. And needless to say, I guess I'll include ratings in this. This film is a 10 out of 10. Has a Glory is, as of now, my pick for the second greatest war film of all time and the second greatest that I've ever seen. This film was directed by Stanley Kubrick, so yeah, of course it's a masterpiece. It's directed so perfectly and visually with a bunch of little hints in the background and satires that you can only notice if you're truly paying attention in the film. It's a perfect commentary on the nature of the First World War, and it combines all the best aspects of essentially every World War I movie ever made, even since this film's release. So yeah, needless to say, strong direction is something that's definitely a strong aspect of all my top war films. Back to what I was saying about it, combining elements from all the great World War I films, even ones that are made after this, are the fact that it actually shows, and with phenomenal footage, the actual battle tactics during the war, how it satirizes things in a very general and organic way, how it dives into the minds, perspectives, and lives of the soldiers fighting the war, its leaders and their battle tactics, and the actual effect and nature of that war in a realistic way. This film is also able to show the horrors and violent brutality of the First World War in a way that I did not expect that works perfectly with the film and can captivate and disturb you when you think about it realistically. How monstrous these men fought, how they would fight, and that they would probably have a good drink with, but because of the size that their countries were on, because of politics, resources, and money, they all end up killing each other instead in the sick game that we call war. Kirk Douglas, the main actor, is also great, of course, impeccably written and directed. The cinematography is phenomenal. And yeah, the battle scenes are well executed and it feels historically accurate and authentic. Yeah, this film is definitely a 10 out of 10. It may be on a bad day where I'm not ready to watch something as epic as this, a 9.8, but today, a 10 out of 10. It just shows how great the film really is that on a rewatch, I updated the rating, but you know, the rating can still fluctuate. Ran is a 1985 film directed by Akira Kurosawa, the legendary Japanese, pretty sure it's Japanese, director who inspired many works throughout the entire 20th century and 21st century, including, most popularly, Star Wars. The film is a violent epic ravaging its way through feudal Japan that has everything you would want from a film like it, 
except for, of course, heightened fantasy and cliches of historical epics. But that really just allows this film to elevate itself as it is about greater things than just the morality of people and more so about, like most of these films, the psychology of war. It is both historically authentic and accurate as many of the things used and done in this film actually happened in real history. And of course, they definitely try to make it as accurate as possible with the time that the film takes place. It is a remarkably deep and well-made film about violence, greed, power, and war in general that I suggest you watch. I give this film a 10 out of 10. In fourth place is The Thin Red Line, and just to say, Ran, Paths of Glory, and The Thin Red Line can all change their spots on any given day. That's how close all these films are and how great they all are. But back to it, The Thin Red Line is a very good film. It, like all of these so far, dives into the psychology of war, and like Apocalypse Now, how men can turn into monsters. This is a film directed by Terrence Malick, and it could have not been made by anybody else, as it has a Terrence Malick touch that elevates this film, from the way it's filmed to its obsession with a bunch of naturalistic things and, you know, actually nature, and just the way the camera is very voyeuristic. Needless to say, this allows the film to be very explorative and touching and even poignant, but it doesn't shy away from the violence of war and the horrors of World War II, and what these men were ordered to do willing to do and forcing themselves to do in order to achieve victory and hopefully one day go home to a world that they dream of and would hopefully love. It is another great film with similar themes to Apocalypse Now that I recommend you watch. I give this film a 9.8 out of 10. I think this image sums it up enough why I put this film come and see in this discussion. That alone just shows how disturbing the film can be, and it isn't even close to how disturbing it gets. The film is about violence amongst other things in war, and basically the epitome of the horror of war, which is the film that I referenced earlier to rival how disturbing Apocalypse Now is. I strongly suggest you watch this film. Come and See is a great film, but your discretion is advised. I give this film a 10 out of 10 and only put it lower than The Thin Red Line because I feel like The Thin Red Line has better commentary about war itself. From this point on, I'm going to show the ratings for each of the films right when the poster hits because I don't think I'm going to go into as much depth as I did with the first five. So in sixth place is Full Metal Jacket and I give it a 9.5 out of 10. And the only reason for that 9.5 is the fact that the rest of the movie, the second half of the movie after tr boot camp, doesn't seem to go as hard as boot camp and isn't as well beloved and just isn't as polished as the boot camp stuff. But needless to say, Full Metal Jacket is a great film and is also about, well, more so less the psychology of man in war and more so about the psychology of a soldier in war, more specifically a American Marine in the Vietnam War. The film perfectly captures how institutionalized and messed up some of these men can become going through boot camp and how scarring the actual war in Vietnam can be and what made the Vietnam War so horrific in the first place. I strongly recommend it, it's a great film. Das Boot, which I've given a 9.8, is only lower than Full Metal Jacket because I just think Full Metal Jacket is a more universal war film that deserves to be higher. As this is not a ranking, this is just a list. But that, of course, just shows how great Das Boot is or The Boat. For the uninitiated, Das Boot is a German film about a bunch of submarine operators during World War II and how being underwater for so long changes them psychologically and how when they go back up to the surface, the world is much different than they remember and once perceived. The film is very well done and well directed by Wolfgang Peterson. The film has very similar themes to Full Metal Jacket with a different spin on institutionalizing of soldiers, but this time actually in the field of the submarine and how war changes them psych psychologically. It's a great film, don't wanna give any more away. I hope you will go watch it now. The Bridge Over River Kwai is just a great classic war film. I mean, in place of this, many people would replace this film with Lawrence of Arabia, but I feel like this film hits much harder. It's just a very well done classic war film that uses all of the classic war film tropes and just crafts a very hard-hitting story that doesn't need to be violent or disturbing to just show you the impact of war on men. 
The original All Quiet on the Western Front is another classic war film, but that is much different than from the bridge, um, the bridge on the River Quay. And I think it is better than both the 1979 version and the 2022 version. The film is near perfect at commenting how governments manufacture war and profit off of it and how much the men lose while sacrificing things for their own corrupt country. Great film. Give it a watch. Saving Private Ryan is just a classic war film directed to perfection by Steven Spielberg that has a very poignant story. I just don't think it is able to reach the highs of many of the other films on this list because I don't think it goes hard enough into actually showing the war unfold and really anchors the audience in with its main characters. That also makes a very mainstream and accessible war film on the list, and yes, it is a classic. The Deer Hunter is a phenomenal film that is very disturbing about the Vietnam War that I suggest you watch. I'm not going to say any more. It's a classic and a masterpiece. The Hurt Locker is expertly executed and tension-filled and tells a really good story about the Gulf War and encapsulates everything about that war in one movie and the good and the bad of it. It also tells a really good story about the Hurt Locker itself. I'll leave it to you to find out what it is. Zero Dark Thirty is another masterful film from Catherine Bigelow in a row this time about the war on terror and just the cruel tactics the U.S. government used to get what they wanted and, and the implications of the actions that they took to do so. Jarhead is a film that I love and seems to be one that perfectly captures what it's like to be a soldier, especially during the Gulf War. And I feel like this film, if it was released in the 90s during Sam Mendes' actual directorial debut, this film would have been that decade's uh, Full Metal Jacket. And there are, of course, references to that in this film. It's one of my favorite films of all time. And yeah, go check it out. Ooh, look, two Sam Mendes films in a row that happen to be war films. Yeah, this, according to this list and me, is the second greatest World War I film of all time. And there's a lot less, especially great ones, than you'd think. You know, there's been a lot recently. Yeah, 1917 is just a very well-done film. I've basically written an entire essay on it, the way the two characters interact, how it sets up its goal, the tension, the drive of the story, the actual character arcs, and how the main character learns to run straight into battle instead of cowering like he did when his friend died. The direction and wonders are also superb. Like I said, the arcs, the story, the themes, and the cinematography is next level. Also the lighting as well. Many other things, including the sound design, I just keep mentioning them. Many other things make this film great. Pretty much everything about this film is great, and that is why I recommend Though I don't find it to be as masterful as many others say, I think Dunkirk is a great and masterfully executed film by Christopher Nolan that really shows three different sides of war, and it's just a great portrayal of the events that happened that day and the heroism that took place and the bravery in the hearts of all these soldiers. The very more unconventional pick, Jojo Rabbit, is most certainly a war film and is a very well done, lighthearted, but still poignant and heartfelt comedy and satire of World War II and the Hitler Youth Program that I strongly suggest that you watch. It's a really good film about hate and prejudice, and yeah, watch it. Though I do not see it as a war film, and I've really come to accept what many people have said, that this film is more akin to a spy film, and see it as more of a spy film, than just set during the World War II era, like something like Where Eagles Dare. This film is still great, and has everything you would want for Quentin Tarantino. Um, sharp writing, great character moments, violence, alternate history, movie fun, a great villain, compelling story, memorable characters, classic Tarantino action, performances, and homages coupled with his direction that make this film a worthy member and rightful member of this list. I'll talk about it more alongside the rest of Tarantino's films in anticipation for his new film, The Movie Critic, right before it actually comes out. The Dirty Dozen is my second to last pick for this list. Out of all the classic war films to include on this list that might not be as good as some others, I chose this film as it is really just the most iconic and well-rounded one. It's really pulpy, fun, it's out there, it has original idea and concept, it's great performances and action. It's a lot of fun, especially put in the context of the fact that it's an older film and it is just a really great war film. It went up against competition for this placement, such as the Big Red One, uh, Cross of Iron, both Where Eagles Dare and Eagle Has Landed, as well as A Bridge Too Far, Original and Glorious Bastards, Kelly's Heroes, and The Great Escape. My last pick is Star Wars. Too bad it's on here. For those who stay here this long, thank you. I hope that is most of you. I hope you enjoy your own 4th of July. I wish I could have done something bigger with this video, but whatever. Peace out.